Hello and welcome. In this video, we are doing something very interesting. We are building an intraday cryptocurrency price database using Python and SQL. So we are setting up a Python script, which is processing data from Binance and is writing that into an SQL database. Why would that be interesting or relevant for you? I'll give you a simple calculation example. If you would only consider one coin and want to analyze one minute granular data, that would be 60 rows per hour, 1.4k rows per day and 43k rows per month. This is too much data to both pull and analyze with API calls alone. So the idea is we are storing this huge amount of data in a database and make it accessible for us. With that, we can analyze multiple coins going back several months or even years. All right, let's get started. We need some libraries. Pandas for data handling from Pandas T-Series offsets. We need month end that enables us to jump from one month to another. From SQL Alchemy, we need create engine to connect to SQL. From Binance client, we need the client to pull price data using the Binance API. And I'm also instantiating the client. Next, we need a function which is pulling cryptocurrency price data. And I'm going to copy paste a function which I've covered in previous videos from my other screen here. And this function we have to modify a bit. So currently this function is working in the way that we are pulling candlestick data on the one minute time frame starting at a particular date. So these are some data manipulations. Here I'm just extracting time, open, high, low, close, and volume. Then I'm setting the index to time, transform the Unix format timestamp to a human readable timestamp, and then I'm typecasting the values to floating type values. So currently when I'm pulling data, let's say for Bitcoin, and I'm starting, yeah, let's start yesterday so that it's not taking too long so 15th october now it's working like this it's just going until today right so to the most recent uh, time here right but i want to redesign this function this function should just pull me intraday data so for the one minute time frame starting at a given date and going until the end of the month. The reason for that is I want to use this function to write data into the SQL database and I want to do it chunk by chunk, you know? So I want to write one month by another month into the SQL database. So let's redesign this function here by simply defining end and now i'm just taking the given starting date and use the month end function to get to the end of this month so as i'm passing the start as you saw as a string value i'm using pd to date time to transform that string value into a daytime object with that i can add plus month end zero I'm just jumping to the end of the month. So if I'm providing the start date of let's say 1st of September, this would just end up at the end of September. All right. Now I want to pass that end to this get historical K line function here so that I'm only getting candlestick data starting from the provided date and going until the end of the month of that given date. Okay. As we have to provide it as string values, we also have to transform this to a string. And with that, we have uh, changed or modified this function so we can work with that. So I'm going to show you how this could look like. So if I'm taking the first uh, October here, or maybe let's take the first September. This will of course take some time now because as I explained in the beginning, this is quite some data for the one minute time frame. 
but you will see that it is just polling data starting in the beginning of September and is going until the last day of September and is probably providing us something like 43k rows but we will see in some uh, seconds. While this is running we are defining an array of coins right because as I said in the beginning we want to create uh, more than one table we want to analyze a bunch of coins and I'm just taking some uh, examples here so I will link this uh, coin list or rather uh, a tuple in the video description so this is just some random coin names here which are tradable on Binance right so as, as I said it's just an example you can also take only three coins will also work you can even take one coin here it's just for the presentation you see that when we are calling this new modified function here now we are getting as I said data starting in the beginning of September going until the last day of September and as you see uh, for 41k rows here right and yeah that's how this function is working and we will use that later on when importing um, one minute granular data month by month and also coin by coin to the database. For now we have our coin triple or array whatever you want to call it. You can also use a list by the way. I'm just taking a, a tuple here. And with that we only need a date range because we want to loop over uh, some starting dates, right? So pandas has a very handy function for that called date range. You can provide a date. For instance, we could take, uh, let's take June of this year and let's end just today. Let's go until today. We can use pandas to date time and just provide today and define the frequency F S M S, and with that you will see that I'm just getting dates um, starting in June, the beginning of June, beginning of July, beginning of August, and so on. Right. So you might already guess what I want to do, right? So I will pass those dates here to my new modified get data function, and with that. I can just pull monthly um, uh, or, or month chunks um, of one minute granular data, right? So let's store that date range. But let's start in September because I just want to show you how this is working because otherwise it will take quite some time, right? You saw how long one month is taking here. So I'm just going to show you from September on. Okay, so we have a date range. Now, what else do we need? We need a sleep function to not overload the API. And I should have imported that in the very, very beginning here uh, from time import sleep. This is just yeah, quite literally sending your script to sleep for X amount of seconds, right? So how is this working? If I'm taking for I in range 10 uh, sleep five seconds print I let's do that two three you will see nothing is happening for five seconds and then uh, after five seconds the loop is going through right and we will use that after each iteration wait 60 seconds so we don't overload the API and that's basically everything we need to fill in or build our database so we are just looping for coin in coins this is our first iteration right this is our outer loop and now we are just looping over the coins and here we are looping for this coin we are looping over the date range so we are pulling September and October data here or if you go more back 
right? January, February, March, and so on, right? So I'm just showing you for presentation reasons only this uh, short time period here. So for date in date range, and now we are printing out uh, a message so that we know what's going on, processing, and now we are taking the date in the date range and we wanna print out the month name. So I'm just printing out month name here. So just that you know what I'm doing here for date in date range uh, is looking like this. And if I'm taking date month, I'm only getting the uh, month integer here. But if I'm taking month name, I'm getting September and October, right? So this is simply what I'm doing here. So date month name for the coin, right? We are currently pulling data for, right? And then we are getting this message. And now we are defining our data frame by calling our get data function, provide the coin we are currently pulling data for. And now we are just passing the date. So we are starting in September. So the date when you loop over it is a daytime object. We have to again transform that to a string. Otherwise it wouldn't work here. So we are pulling um, price data for the uh, given month here in this inner loop for that coin in the outer loop. And now we are just importing after we've pulled the data using the API, we are importing this to SQL, give the uh, or provide the table name. And in this case, I'm just taking the coin. So the table will uh, be named BTC USDT. We have to provide the engine, which we didn't define yet, but we will do so right now. So the engine is our connection to SQL Lite, and you usually define that uh, in the top of the script. So I'm going to use create engine, create an SQL Lite database, give that a name. So any name here, dot DB, I'm just calling that coin test here. Um, and with that, I can use this engine to both uh, write data to SQL Lite and also pull data from SQL Lite. We'll do that in some seconds or minutes whatsoever. So we have our engine and we are providing that here to yeah, let Python or rather uh, SQL Alchemy know that we wanna import this data frame to our SQL Lite database, which is stored in our engine. If the table exists, we just want to append data and we're setting the index to true. Okay, now we can um, yeah, use the sleep function here and as said, sleep 60 seconds after each month so that we don't overload the API. You can also sleep after each coin, then just put it here, right? Also possible. And when a coin is finished, I wanna have an output as well. So finished coin, right? And with this, so if I'm executing that, I am, so that you understand what's going on then, I am creating a database called CoinTest, which is an SQLite database. And I'm creating, in each iteration here, I'm creating a table, Bitcoin USDT, ETH, USDT, and so on. And those tables are filled with data in this inner loop here. And in specific, one minute granular uh, candlestick data. Okay, so let's run this. And now you see processing September for Bitcoin USDT. Of course, this will take some time for each iteration and you can also work with smaller time intervals, right? You can also take um, bi-weekly data if you don't wanna uh, wait that long in each iteration here, right? With that, you have to take care of some stuff here. So you have to define that you only wanna go a date plus um, two weeks in 
the end uh, value here, right? So my recommendation is to just keep it like this. So we are processing still. So let's open up another script while this is running. And here I'm just going to connect to um, SQL Alchemy again. Also need pandas. And that's already it for libraries. And then I'm going to define an engine, which is exactly the same as we were using here. And now I can just connect to this just created database, this SQLite database. So I could take a look at the Bitcoin table when one inner iteration is through, is through, which is not the case yet, but we can already write uh, read SQL. So let's just take select star from uh, Bitcoin USDT. And here we are providing the engine. And if this first iteration is, th is through in some seconds here, um, which might be the case, by the way, because I didn't print out a uh, month uh, process here. This was uh, my fault. So maybe we are simply in within the sleep currently. So you could also uh, print out processing for this month finished here, right? But now you see we are in the next iteration. So we were actually in the sleep. Um, while I was talking to you. So we can just read out data now. And you see we have this wonderful data, one minute granular data for Bitcoin. And you see we are only going until September now because we are still processing for uh, October for Bitcoin here, right? So when this is through, you can just uh, pull data from uh, those different tables here. And you can also do some SQL stuff, right? You can um, bring those tables together by joining them on the uh, time column. And you can do some analysis with that. And yeah, that's basically it for using SQLite. In the end, I just want to quickly also cover uh, MySQL, because I think some of you are using MySQL and I think MySQL is um, the actual way to go. And I think it's, it fits in quite nicely here as well. So we are doing everything for MySQL. So what do we need to do? We need to import PyMySQL here and just ch slightly change the engine here. So the engine has to be instead of SQLite has to be Py, uh, sorry, MySQL plus Py, MySQL, then get rid of some slashes. And then you have to define the user, which is root in my case, and then uh, my password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you have to define the host. In my case, is local host. And with that, I would connect to my um, MySQL database, right? So the standard is no password, as far as I remember. Uh, so you just leave out the password here, right? Uh, but anyhow, this is how you set up the engine for MySQL. So yeah, let's actually restart the kernel for now because the other uh, uh, loop is still running. Let's, let's j just execute that again. Now we have the MySQL engine. This stays the same as before. Stays the same, stays the same. And yeah, here we have to do some uh, amendments because we don't have a uh, schema yet, right? And as, as explained in my SQL tutorial, uh, my SQL is working with schemas. So the only thing you have to amend here is to define a schema. And I will just call that coin intra. So 
So we have schema coin intra. Before doing that, we have to create this uh, schema here. So let's take our engine, use execute and provide the SQL syntax for creating a schema or database. It's the same in my SQL. So create database or create schema, doesn't matter. Coin intra. So with that, we have created the schema and let this loop and can let this loop run again. So let's go to the notebook or let me comment on one more thing uh, before. So if you want to update that, let's say daily or uh, in whatever frequency you want, you have to pull the maximum timestamp from the current table and then only add the data after that timestamp. So we can do that together in case you're interested in stuff like that. Just let me know but just that you're aware of that. So this is how you uh, maintain and keep the data up to date. So let's just finally uh, go to the other notebook again. It's from the logic, it's the exact same thing. So you're just taking uh, this engine here. So you're connecting to MySQL. So let's restart that. and stays the same. So let's pull data for Bitcoin. So I hope we are lucky and this is already through. Otherwise we need to wait some seconds together. Yeah, you see that we don't have any data yet. So you see, um, oh no, I made a mistake here. Sorry, we have to provide the schema name first. Sorry for that. So because we are in MySQL now, we have schemas, so we have to access the um, table name with the uh, database name beforehand, like this. Sorry for that. So if we are doing that, you will see that we are getting the Bitcoin data. So for MySQL, um, this was also successful. If you want to have more background on how to use MySQL and learn stuff like schemas, databases and so on, be invited to check out my MySQL tutorial. And yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this was interesting, helpful, informative and I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.